So, title of the chapter is Kimachi which is based on our revolutionary hero, Kuma. At the beginning of chapter, we have another reader request. In the cover page, Zoro looks frustrated because he lost a game of musical chairs with Chihuahua's dog, and they are playing this game in a forest. And we understand why Zoro might have lost the game, it's because he may have had trouble finding his way from one chair to another. Chapter 1096 continuing with a flashback of God Valley, where a person is announcing the rules of the game. According to the rules, those who hunt the 13 special category slaves will receive 10,000 points. The remaining 150 slaves are categorized as rare slaves. If someone defeats a slave in one shot, they will get an excellent bonus, and the winner will receive a luxurious reward. In this picture, there are 12 silhouette figures shown. One of them looks like Garling who is a holy knight. The other unknown 11 figures might also be holy knights. Garling tells his opponent to sit back and watch as he takes control of the stage. We then introduce to another unknown celestial dragon wearing a hat and holds a large gun in his hand. And this guy claims that the Mammire family would be the winner. Next guy we have wearing a gas mask on his face and he tells Garling not to expect easy victory. And here we have final celestial dragon with a smile on his face says nothing. And these three might be the holy knights among the 11 silhouette figures we saw earlier. In the next scene, we see that the slaves are deeply frightened, as if they are experiencing a terrible nightmare. They wonder how something like this happened, and why anyone would treat their fellow human beings in such a cruel way. In the next scene, we see two celestial dragons shooting bullets at the slaves. They don't spare anyone, whether it's a young or old. Then someone from the Celestial Dragon group said that the game hasn't started yet, thinking about the other 200 nobles who are also taking part. There's suddenly one hour left before the hunt festival begins, and the Celestial Dragon is looking for a good hunt. From God Valley we cut over to Navy HQ, where we see young Fleet Admiral Kong calling Garp, who is enjoying his vacation. Kongs want Garp to go over to God's Valley to protect the Celestial Dragon. Kong informed Garp that the reports haven't been verified yet. But this incident looked like it will be disaster level, as it's all connected to protecting the Celestial Dragon. But we know that Garp doesn't care if anything happens to this punk Celestial Dragon. Garp told Kong that he had warned them before, that messing with Hachinasu would eventually come back to bite them. And now they are facing the results of their actions. Garp also mentioned that you are the one who stole the treasure, crown jewel of Pirate Island and you seem to believe they won't take any action. So, the Rock's pirates might have went to God Valley because something important had been stolen from them by the marines, and they wanted to get it back from them. Hearing this, Kong was shocked and asked Garp where he got this information. Ignoring Kong's question, Garp asked him if he had assigned extra protection to the Celestial Dragon to make up for their mistakes. He wanted to know why Kong was so worried. Then, Kong admitted that there was one crucial thing they had overlooked. He mentioned that Gal D. Roger was also heading in that direction. Upon hearing Gal D. Roger's name, Garp became very attentive and promptly said, I'm on my way. Next, we switch to Hachinasu, where some pirates were arguing about the rock pirates getting ahead of them and heading to God Valley. They decided they would go there too because they were aware that this event was going to have a massive impact on the pirate world. Back to God Valley, Ivankov is surprised to see so many ships gathering to a single island. Ivankov also let his fellow slaves know that they all have been trapped in this hellish reality, and nobody would be able to escape. Ivankov already knew that one day all this entire page of history would be lost. Next picture we see that the Celestial Dragon has began their hunt. They chose God Valley to claim the abounded natural resources. Also they have targeted 10,000 civilians as their branded rabbits for their hunt. Ivankov also mentioned that their rampage will be a total of three week, and by end of it there wouldn't be a single survivor. One of the slaves said they were promised freedom if they could stay alive for three weeks until the festival ended. Ivankov, very angry, informed them that in their previous hunt, no one had survived. Another slave questioned why they would lie and give them false hope. Ivankov explained that the Celestial Dragon didn't find it enjoyable to kill people who had already given up on life. They wanted the slaves to desperately hope for freedom so that they could be more exciting targets for the hunt. The slaves never really had a chance to win this cruel game. Their only hope for survival was to escape altogether. Here we got to know that Figarl and Garling had scored 10,000 points by hunting down the valuable targets. Everything was recorded and broadcasted live to the Holy Land, Mariewa. It looked like the ladies were cheering for Garling, and all of this was shown using Den Den Mushi. Then, we see Ivankov praising a shark fishman for biting the handcuffs and setting him free. Next, we see Ginny was monitoring the situation with the help of Den Den Mushi. She let the other know that the tournament prizes would be key to their escape. She mentions that one of the prizes is the most powerful type of devil fruit, which lets you turn into an azure dragon. The other prize is the pawpaw devil fruit, which can be used to launch yourself and others to a distant island. 
Ivankov was sure that if any of them managed to eat one of those fruits they would be able to escape this hunting festival. Someone asked how they could do that since the prizes were kept in the center of the island. Then Ginny revealed that she was a skilled thief and wiretapper, and she was the one who leaked all the information about God Valley two weeks ago to outside world and she was sure that her message may have got someone's attention. So, it's all thanks to Ginny that the one most historical event that is God Valley incident happened because of her. Ginny also mentions that a plan like this required lots of diversions and distractions to succeed. Kuma agreed to be a decoy because his size and strength would help him survive longer than the others. He also admitted he didn't want to see anyone die when they tried this escape plan. Later on, Navy ships were attacked and Navy notices that it's done by Rock's pirates and they weren't sure why they were here. One of the Marines said there was no time to worry about it because they were being swarmed by notorious pirates. One of the higher ranking commanded the force to return fire and he wondered why this was the first time he was hearing about that. In the next panel we see every big shot of Rock pirates in their prime were here. We have Prime Whitebeard, Miss Back and won her back and on left we see Unknown Fishman. To his right we have former empresses of Kuja Pirates Gloriosa, Shiki, Big Mom, Kaido, and John. Whitebeard notices that Rox has already rushed ahead of them and said when did Rox you got permission to order me. Stussy was spawning over Whitebeard. Gloriosa told her to back off because she making a fool of herself. Big Mom talking about calming something either she is talking about treasure or the devil fruit. Here Kaido point that it will be pointless in her hands. Whitebeard was sure that the Rox is bound enough to lose sight of the main goal and he was concerned they needed to confirm that the main objective was here. Then Chicky shouted Whitebeard who died and made him in charge and promised to knock all of them out of his way. Big Mom was certain that she will snatch all the treasure under their noses and that she'd grab it before anyone else. Kaido knew that the Roger was on his way too and he was about to say something but got interrupted by Lilin telling Kaido to hold his horses. Stussy claims that it will be the decisive battle and upon this John agrees. Gloriosa was sure that this is the day they finally settle things with the Roger pirates. The Rock's pirates has made landfall, which made Celestial Dragon unhappy and scold Marine if something happens to them. The Marines had no idea how the location was leaked and have no idea what the pirates were after. The Rock's pirates invaded the island from east on the other side. On west coast they were attacked by Roger's pirates. We then see Prime Roger along with Silver Rayleigh and Scooper Gavin. Roger was really excited to get in action. Rayleigh admit the situation seems rough. While Gavin insists that the Roger not to pull out Captain Card, when it's come to calling dibs here. Darling order the marines to pull back and ensure that the celestial dragons are all right. Some weird character behind Garling who thought it was shameful because they had surrounded the whole island with ships. Along with Garling we have dark hair women. Slave on the island have no idea what was going on. Marines were not sure that they would be able to make it. Just then hero of the marine Garp joins the battle, which boosted the moral of the marines. Garp asked his fellow subordinated where could he find Roger. We also have Garp bodyguard Bogard with him who is haven't been aged. Because of all this chaos Ivankov and Kuma manages to grab a hand on the devil fruits they were looking for. But out of nowhere Ivankov was attacked by Big Mom and she got a hand on Kaido devil fruit. Ivankov told Kuma to eat his devil fruit. Then Kuma eat the devil fruit. Just the Kuma was blown away by Saint Saturn. We again see those black lightning and flame surrounded him. He recognized Kuma to be Buccaneer. He gave Kuma an option to live either life as a slave or die. Nothing else will be tolerated for someone of his kind. This is what the tides of time have to decide. Kuma asked Saturn that he is someone important. He couldn't understand how someone could be reborn to be more or less important. If a person could be born as a slave, then what is the point to be reborn? Being in pain Kuma insisted that if he had some kind of power, he would use it to save as many people he could, just like the sun god Nika. Upon hearing Kuma's word Saturn seems angry, and made statement that what the reason is that your race needed to be eliminated. Somewhere else on the island Roger planned on stopping Rox, but Rox told Roger to get out of his way. From here we moved to Sorbet Kingdom. We got to know that Kuma and other manages to take himself and his friends to the Sorbet Kingdom. So, the full story of God Valley remains in shadow for us viewers. Sooner or later in the upcoming chapter we will get full history of God Valley incident. Ivankov and other got to know that only Garp heroism being reported and they don't have any idea about what exactly happened at island after they were left. Ivankov wonders how long Kuma will pray like this, but Kuma thinking that he could have saved more people back there. Ivankov told Kuma to stop thinking as he saved over 500 people. Ginny also complimented Kuma for his action and called him Kumachi. Ivankov proclaimed that Kuma hand is the hand of liberation and with those hand he can bless people with freedom. Later on, Ivankov was ready to set sail and planned on basking his freedom. Kuma told his friend Ivankov that he'll never forget his face as long as he lives. Ginny apologized Ivankov as she wasn't planning on joining him. She just wanted to stay with Kuma until she figures out what to do with her life. After that Ivankov set sailed. 
After that we see Kuma and Ginny helping each other, as Ginny was acting like a big sister to Kuma. So, with this I end this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If do so then don't forget to give video a thumbs up and if you new to the channel don't forget to subscribe.